everyone today we are talking about gastro and dehydration in babies and children when do you need to worry how much poo is too much runny poo and when do you need to seek help my name is Sarah Hunstead I'm a pediatric nurse mum of two author of a life a finger a pee up a nose a practical guide to baby and child first aid and I'm founder of CPR kids and at CPR kids we empower parents and families with the life-saving skills of a baby and child first aid and also recognition of the sick child so I love talking about gastro um, in my experience as a pediatric emergency nurse if I you know my goodness I think about how many kids with gastro I have seen over the years and not only that as a mum of two the amount of times the dreaded gastro bug has hit our house and wiped out our family um, you know I've, I've lost count over the years um, so what we're going to talk about today we're going to go into what is gastro how is it spread and how can we prevent the spread if we can at all what to do importantly so if your child does have diarrhea and vomiting they've got gastro what do you need to do to try and keep them hydrated the signs of dehydration and also when you need to seek medical help so that's what we'll be going through today before uh, we start if I can get you to give me a thumbs up or a wave just so I can see that all the technology is working as it should be that would be fantastic and please jump in the comments below as well tag anyone who you think may benefit from this information and we will be posting this uh, to our timeline so the baby to toddler show timeline the CPR kids timeline and also uh, we'll uh, put it on um, some in some of our insta pages as well so let's get into this what is gastro now first of all I just want to um, go into what actually happens inside our bodies because if we actually get that it makes everything have so much more clarity and sense so gastro is really really common uh, you if you've gotten through if you've got a child who's you know primary school age and gastro hasn't hit your house yet I'm not sure that how that that's a miracle that's what that is that's an absolute miracle <laughs> so typically when a child gets gastro they are caused by viruses um, that is what typically causes viral gastro and it usually not always usually will start with vomiting and then progress to the diarrhea usually the vomiting will settle within a day um, within 24 hours sometimes a touch longer but the gap oh, the gastro sorry the diarrhea can last for seven to ten days Ooh, in um, and now some of the na more nasty viruses um, typically um, when it's spread it's spread from person to person and but there are of course some particularly contagious ones such as norovirus uh, which is airborne where you can be in the same room as someone kind of like the cruise ship stuff um, so you know obviously we've got the issues with cruise ships and coronavirus um, but also there's uh, you often hear about cruise ships and outbreaks of gastro on there as well and that's often because of norovirus so of course there are some bacteria as well which can cause um, gastro they can be uh, you know quite nasty it can often happen from food poisoning and kids will often need um, medical help with that um, so what exactly is it why do we get diarrhea and vomiting when we get a gastrovirus inside us well if you can imagine that your child they've gotten this gastrovirus inside of them what it does is it actually can cause inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract as well so if you imagine um, you know for just an analogy here that the stomach and the intestines what happens is is they become red and angry and your body just wants to get out what is in there that's why we start vomiting it needs to rest it doesn't want anything in there so we start the vomiting and what happens in the intestines is you know as I do this that's what I mean by your intestines with the intestines what happens is is that's where all our nutrients and our water and everything are absorbed and they've got lots of little finger like um, structures in them called villi and what happens is is that all 
inside the intestine where we usually absorb our water all of our nutrients and everything all our salts our sugars all that kind of stuff what happens in is you imagine it gets really red and inflamed these lovely finger-like structures that absorb all of that they can't do that and so what happens is the water and everything can't be absorbed into the body and that's why we get that runny poo and we become dehydrated and we can get electrolyte imbalances that's why one of the biggest things that i want you to take away from today is a child who has diarrhea and vomiting water is not enough okay because all of this you know you imagine this inflammation this inability to absorb all our salts and sugars our electrolytes we need to replace them in the body because if we're giving them water alone they can have a low blood sugar they can get electrolyte imbalances because they're not able to absorb so that's why in a child with gastro water is not enough okay so that's one thing about that how do we prevent the spread if we get gastro in our house good luck is the first thing that i need to say second thing I have actually been lucky enough to escape of not getting gastro when both of my kids and my husband have gone straight down with it. How? Well, it's not such a secret thing because we are quite used to this at the moment. Hand washing. Hand washing is one of the most important things you can do to stop the spread. Now, I like personally in my home, I like to use uh, natural products such as eucalyptus oil and vinegar to clean. Um, I've got a child who's quite sensitive to chemical products, so we try and keep our home um, as low tox as possible. When somebody in my house has gastroenteritis, I have got the big guns out. Okay, so I use um, the 70% isopropyl alcohol wipes to kill everything i wipe over every surface wherever they go i'm following them okay door handles toilets i you know this is the house that we live in at the moment is the first time i've ever had two bathrooms um, i've always had just one bathroom and so when gastro's hit it hasn't been an option um, to be able to separate bathrooms but if that is an option for you then absolutely the kid who's vomiting or the adult who's vomiting they get a bathroom to themselves if that's an option for you otherwise certainly what i do is that i have been every time they're in there i've wiped over everything okay so i always get the big guns out for that so that's helping how we you know prevent the spread when you if you've got a child who is diarrheaing into a nappy um, certainly you can choose to wear gloves if you want to or we are just double bagging that getting it out to the big bin straight away and then happy birthday twice with the hands okay so hand hygiene is the most important thing you can do to stop the spread However, there is one thing, because remember, you've probably been up all night with your child because they are vomiting. You are bleary eyed. Your brain has left for the day. OK, now this happened to a friend of mine. Uh, we were all in a house together. We've gone away um, for a, a friend's wedding and we we're all sharing a house and her little one had um, diarrhea and vomiting. I've gone into action mode wiping door handles doing all this i'm like i want to go to this wedding i obviously this is pre-covid um you know i want to go to this wedding i don't want to get sick no one else can get sick and so i was you know running around completely anal about cleaning everything and he had an entire night of vomiting in the morning he was feeling a bit better she was giving him some toast he left one of the crusts of the toast on her on his um high chair thing and mum bleary eyed not thinking picks up the crust of toast and starts eating it it was like slow motion i'm going no don't eat the toast because of course he's been vomiting all night he's eating this toast these lovely viruses would love to go to another person to infect them and so sharing food drinks is a surefire way to be able to catch the virus so don't eat their scraps absolutely no sharing between siblings or anything like that okay um, last time my child had castro um, her cup i wrote in marker over the top easy only 
<laughs> so that you know my other child who has got a habit of just looking around oh yeah there's a vessel with some water in it I'll drink that and it doesn't matter whose it is that she knew not to grab her sister's drink so that's an important thing to do and of course when do we need to seek help now first of all Let's go into some of the signs and symptoms of gastro because diarrhea and vomiting doesn't necessarily mean that your child has gastro. If there is any doubt, you need to seek medical help. But of course, if it's gone through the family, then you can, you know, there's a pretty sure bet that it is. So what normally happens is that you start with vomiting, you end up with diarrhea. Of course, there's tummy pain. Often the tummy pain is relieved by vomit or having a diarrhea. It gets a bit better and then it gets bad again. They'll start saying sore tummy and then they'll spew everywhere again. So that's something that's a typical of gastro, to be honest. And what we need to do is we need to think about, OK, what's happening here? Do I need to seek medical help? So first of all, number one, if your child is under the age of six months and they have vomiting or they have diarrhea and vomiting or even just diarrhea, you need to seek medical help. They need to see a doctor because they can lose fluids extremely quickly, become dehydrated extremely quickly. So under the age of six months with vomiting, diarrhea, they need medical review. OK, so full stop under six months. That's what needs to happen if your child has any comorbidities. So what I mean by that is that they have got other health problems um, such as metabolic issues, um, diabetes. You'll know if diarrhea and vomiting is a problem for your child and you need to seek medical help it should be part of your action plan. So that's an important thing. If your child is still continuing to vomit, we expect it to start, you know, initial, you know, probably about six hours of vomiting for you know like exorcist vomiting okay we expect that to start to really settle after six hours i'm not saying they're going to actually stop vomiting they may still have an occasional vomit but we expect them to get to it to start to improve and really to have stopped within about 24 hours so if they are just vomiting and vomiting and vomiting yeah okay no good if they are really drowsy and it's not their normal sleep time, if you have, um, it's okay to feel a bit more tired. I don't know, I feel like crap if I've got gastro. But if they are really lethargic, you're having difficulty waiting, waking them, that is worrying, okay? You absolutely need medical help. If, of course, there is blood or mucus in your child's poo, then you need to see a doctor. But also, what about the color of the vomit? This is a big one. So what we worry about is bile stained vomit. OK, it can mean that perhaps it's not gastro. Perhaps there is something else going on. And so therefore, color is important. Often people will come in and say, my child is vomiting green. Green is what we worry about. But the type of green is this green like grass. OK, it can even get as dark as my plant back here. OK, this is green. This is the color that we worry about. Often when you vomit, you'll end up with a yellowy color. So this is the only yellow thing I could find in the CPR kids office. So, hey, and, but it's appropriate. Look, it's ISO wipes. So this color yellow that's sitting in here, we're not worrying about. That's not bile. It actually isn't bile. OK, so that yellow um, that is, you know, that's, you know, your child's getting a bit empty and we need to look at them. But the one that we're really concerned about is that grass green, this color here. OK, so it's just differentiating. So that's not that yellow is not green. That's a yellow vomit. It's a green vomit that's like the plant or this that we're really concerned about. And I'd like them to get seen really, really quickly. OK, so if they've got severe tummy pain or ongoing tummy pain, that's worrying. Usually with a viral gastro, what happens is they'll have vomit and it gets relieved. It comes back again, but it's that crampy, yucky, I'm about to vomit pain or I'm about to have a big diarrhea pain. So that if they are having um, fevers, we expect them to have a fever with the viral gastro. But if they're having uh, fevers that is just going along with some of these other things, and perhaps it could be a bacterial illness, take them to the doctor and get them checked out. That's important. And of course, if you are worried 
they are getting worse okay if your gut says that this isn't just a simple gastro that you can treat at home with um, rehydration fluids then i want you to seek medical help so how do you know when your child's dehydrated what are the signs first of all number one they can be quite drowsy and they're feeling yuck look inside their mouth their lips can become quite dry their tongue can be coated their mucous membranes inside can start to become quite dry if they are really starting to get quite dehydrated you may notice they cry but they don't have any tears their eyes can look sunken and dark underneath in a baby whose fontanelle is still open you may notice that their fontanelle starts to look sunken okay and when dehydration gets really bad then what can happen is we have something called um, tenting of the skin and so what happens is is you will pinch the skin on their tummy I'm doing it on my arm because you don't need to see my tummy we don't need to do that okay so we pinch the skin and see how my skin goes back straight away and down in a child who's really really dehydrated you'll do that and the skin actually stays like that because there's not much water in there so it stays up rather than going back down straight away so that's called your skin turgor or skin tenting and so these are signs and symptoms that you're looking out for but hopefully you're not going to get there hopefully we are going to get on top of it by replacing their fluids that they are losing so what do we do first of all we need to remember kids do not have the circulating volume of fluids that we do they can get dehydrated really quickly so we want to get on this okay and we don't need to worry about food don't worry about food okay don't worry because they're not eating their lasagna for dinner doesn't matter okay it's fluids that we become concerned about now and that's what we want to get into them okay so we need to replace what's coming out and it can be a bit of a battle so the first thing you're going to do they're going to have a vomit we're going to rest their tummy for a little bit okay so give them a break don't try and shove anything straight after they vomit just let them settle for a minute and the number one key thing here is small amounts frequently if you go ahead and give them a nice big glass of hydrolyte or electrolyte solution and they chug it down because they're thirsty because dehydrated kids initially will be thirsty okay thirst is one of the symptoms but if they chug that down what's going to happen but they're going to get their stomach remember that red inflamed stomach is going to go whoa hang on a sec no good don't you dare try and put all that fluid inside me I'm going to get that straight back out again because really I don't want that whereas if you put a little small amount of fluids in then what will happen is stomach will be able to absorb that it's not going to get cranky so small frequent amounts are much much better so what kind of fluids do we use the ideal are oral rehydration fluids keep them in your kitchen pantry for when it happens because you can guarantee they'll start vomiting in the middle of the night so what are you going to do oral rehydration fluids have got the right balance of salts and sugars to replace what's in the body so don't try and give children sports drinks um, because sports drinks are the wrong concentration for children okay we shouldn't be using them so you want to use your oral rehydration solution so that can be you know the hydrolyte the pedialyte all of that kind of stuff so good idea to keep them in the cupboard they come in some great flavors from lemonade to orange to grape all that kind of stuff so um, yeah you've got those it is a good thing to do if you don't have any and you can't get some for a while then you can use a dilute um, soft drink such as lemonade or dilute apple juice um, you can do that but 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 it's really preferable to use the oral rehydration solution first so what I'm going to post in the comments below is this which is a fantastic table which tells you exactly how much 
you should be giving and how to dilute. And what it is, it's um, the Sydney Children's Hospital Network fact sheet on gastroenteritis. And it's got brilliant tables in there about how much fluid your child needs every hour and also the um, uh, how to dilute. So for example, juice is one part juice in four parts water or 20 mils plus 80 mils of water. Okay, so that it's got all the ratios in here have how to prepare the suitable fluid. So I'll pop that in the comments below. But I hear people saying, hang on a sec, my child's breastfed. Do I need to give them that or is breast milk okay? You know what? Breast milk. Okay, if your child is breastfed, then the best thing that you can actually give them is breast milk. So continue feeding on demand. Okay, so you might do small frequent feeds rather than a full feed um, and do it at least every two hours. Okay, so that's important. And so in between feeds, you may want to offer um, some oral rehydration solution. Okay, you may want to do that. Absolutely. But you don't need to give them any solids. And so when the vomiting has actually stopped, what do we do? We want to actually really continue to get those fluids in because remember, they could still be having a lot of diarrhea where they're losing a lot of fluid as well. So um, importantly, that's what we do. Breast milk, ideally um, above the oral, if your child is still breastfed. If not, then we are going the oral rehydration solution. So how much do they need? Um, and believe me, you know, giving them um, a full feed might make them vomit with the breast. So maybe smaller frequent feeds is a better idea. But when you can see how much fluid is going into them, what do we need to give them? Ideally, if your child is between the age of six months and two years, we're going to be giving them around 40 to 60 mils an hour. Okay, that's not very much, is it? So a good thing to do is even just get a little, have a little medicine cup, okay? Or, you know, something that you use, you know, when you're baking, something like that. It's got a measure on it. Pour out 60 mils of the rehydration solution and use a syringe or a spoon. And all you're doing is giving five mils at a time about every five minutes. So five mils every five minutes or so going in every 10 minutes, okay? Just whatever you're doing is that tiny little amount frequently. Do not give them the whole, you know, 60 mils or so at once, all right? Do not do that, all right? Because they'll vomit it straight back up again. Five mils is, you know, just that little bit, even, you know, even if you're squirting in one mil every few minutes, if that's what's going in, fantastic. It's about that tiny little bit that stays down. Okay, so don't give them the whole hour amount at once. Give them that tiny little bit over that period of time. Really important. Okay, so remember, as they start to tolerate it well, then what you need to do, the good thing is, is that then we can actually start to increase the fluids. Don't worry about food. And the good thing is, is there's a lot of evidence to say that if you um, give them foods that they feel like, you don't need to you know, restrict any foods, just introduce a normal diet as they feel like it. So if they do ask you for some lasagna for dinner, you can give them a bit of that, um, provided the vomiting is stopped and they're actually asking and they are hungry, you don't need to force them to eat anything. And along uh, probiotics as well, um, I personally uh, use probiotics in my children, especially if they have gastro, um, because obviously we need to restore that balance um, of, of good and bad. And there is evidence out there that says for gastroenteritis, that use of um, a probiotic absolutely can reduce the duration of illness. Okay, the, that is evidence-based. Okay, so that is an important thing. Um, one question that we often do get asked is what about a formula-fed infant as well? So if your infant, and remember under this age of six months, you're seeking medical help, okay? So remember that infant who is formula-fed, who's over the age of six months, yes, what we want to do is replace their formula for the moment with the oral rehydration solution and then aim to be back um, to uh, the formula within 24 hours, okay? So that's an important thing. Now, you don't need to dilute the formula, okay? That's one thing that we don't wanna do, okay? We wanna give them either oral rehydration solution 
or we want to give them just their normal strength formula. That's an important thing. And of course, age appropriate foods um, at meal times when they feel like eating that again, um, even if their poos are still loose. OK, so there we go. What are the key points that I want you to take away from here? So if your baby is less than six months old and they have diarrhea and vomiting, please seek medical help. Be aware of the signs and the symptoms of dehydration and know when you need to seek help. Trust your gut. Uh, get it? Trust your gut? Sorry, bad. That was a mum joke. That was terrible. I apologise. So young kids, yes, they can get dehydrated really, really quickly. And we need to replace what's coming out with what is going in with ideally with either breast milk or an oral rehydration solution. So are there any questions? I know this has been a bit of a long Facebook Live, but I think this has been a uh, big one that we've had to cover today. So if you have any questions, I would love you to pop them in the comments below. And I am just having a look on my device here as well to see if we have any comments so, or questions. Let me just have a quick look. And remember, we would love you to join us in one of our first aid classes because it is really, really important that at all times you know what to do. OK, so Nina has said thank you. You are most welcome, Nina. Um, I hope that this has been helpful, everyone. And if there's no questions and I can't see any at the moment, it could just be my technology. Sometimes it gets a little funky, um, to be honest. But if there is, I'll jump on and I will um, uh, endeavor to answer your questions as well. And I will be posting that fact sheet from Sydney Children's Hospital Network with all of the um, with all of the uh, links down below as well with the tables is what I am trying to say the tables so you can look and see exactly what your child needs for their body weight so thank you so much everyone it has been an absolute pleasure pop in the comments below what you would like next week I'll see you later everyone bye